there is something special, otherworldly, about horses. While many would find this special quality to be indefinable, horse fans can sum it up with one word, magic. Welcome to Inside the Heart of Harness Racing, where today we'll take you behind the scenes in our sport. I'm Sam McKee, and my young co-host here is practically growing up in a harness racing environment. I'm Matthew thors Waples, and I've been working with my parents to learn how to become a harness racing trainer and driver since I was very young. And Matthew is becoming quite the accomplished young horseman. Yes, Sam. I love being with our horses. And this year, I've been training my horse according to Hoyle on the track. He's getting really fast now. I'm too young now to drive in paramutual races, but I do have my M license, which means that I can drive my horses in fair races. Both my mom and dad drive in the races. My mom said I won my first race before I was even born. The first of many wins we hope for you, Matthew. Now, I won't be competing against you, but I'll be announcing you when you make it to the big M. Well, I hope so, Sam, since you're the voice of the Meadowlands. In my years of calling the races at the Meadowlands, I've seen countless horses cross the finish line, and they all have one thing in common. They were all standard breads, which is the equine breed that competes in harness races around the world. We'll show you today how one of these amazing athletes prepares for competition. We'll also show you the versatility of the breed and a glimpse into harness racing's future. But on the outside, Passionate Clyde is getting in gear, and Pierce now has Passionate Clyde roaring up on the outside and pouncing on Macariah Hanover, and uh, Pure Ivory getting underway, but too late. It will be Passionate Clyde and Ron Pierce, and Jimmy Tactor does it again here in the crowd with Passionate Clyde. Macariah Hanover. Welcome to Tactor Stable, a private training facility located in East Windsor, New Jersey. Known as one of the most talented harness horse trainers in the world for his very creative training techniques, Jimmy Tactor is also known for what he represents in harness racing, and that's the love of the sport. This is a, a family operation. I mean, I have my daughter working here in my stable also, and my son-in-law, and uh, you know, we... Make that our daughter. Our daughter, yeah. <laughs> uh, and our son-in-law. Our son-in-law. And, uh, and we live on the farm and uh, that's the way we want to have it. You know, we, that's why we decided uh, actually a long time ago if we could ever afford to have our own farm and, and live on it. And uh, because I don't have any hobby, I mean, uh, we like to go horseback riding and, uh, and uh, the horses is actually uh, our life and our hobby. And, uh, you, know, you know, we're very dedicated, both of us, in, uh, in the sport. And now it's time to introduce you to Passionate Glide. Passionate Glide came to the Tactor Stable in November of 2004 from Brittany Farms, an outstanding breeding farm owned by George Siegel. Passionate Glide did very well at the races as a two-year-old. She even won the Breeders' Crown, one of the richest races of North American harness racing, where horses can win millions of dollars in purse earnings. She was named the Dan Patch Award winner for two-year-old trotting filly of the year and earned over $640,000, making her the richest two-year-old trotter last season. I wish I could win the Breeders' Crown and have a horse of the year. After her two-year-old season ended with much fanfare, Passionate Glide was sent to Brittany Farms in Versailles, Kentucky for the winter. She returned to the Tactor Stable in early February to begin prepping for her three-year-old season, her second year of racing. When we return, we'll take a look at the intentions and strategies behind the training of Passionate Glide. Passionate Glide started off her training by lunging around in the sand. Though it sounds like the horse is taking it easy in the sand, lunging is actually very good exercise. At least for horses. I believe that 
a lot of horses are like human, right-handed, left-handed, and they kind of have a little bit easy one way and another. And uh, by launching them, they teach them the technique and handle both way of going. And, and it's not just going around in circle. You got to get the head down on them, so they working the muscle right. And I, I think it was very important to do that with her in February months. I try to find out the best, uh, uh, the best way for a horse uh, to come from one point to next point without, you know, too many obstacles. So, uh, I, I'm, you know, all horses individual. I mean, I do different things with uh, every single horse. After Passionate Glide had enough of lunging around in the sand, she went into what is called interval training. The horses run in short bursts from one end of the straight track to the other. At the end, there's a circular area where the horses can walk around and prepare for the next run. And the point of interval training is not necessarily to develop speed. In fact, a lot of trainers find that horses' hearts and lungs are strengthened just by going slower speeds. And on days that horses do not interval train, they often jog on a deep sand track. What that does is develop muscles that are very important for going swiftly around the racetrack in the future. And all of us know that have walked along a sandy beach, running or walking in the sand is pretty good exercise. When the horses finally make it to the round track, they train in sets. They jog laps both for physical conditioning and also to get used to training in groups. The round track training allows the horses to practice trotting or pacing around turns so that their balance will be correct for when going to the races as all racing is done around turns. The group training is another way of keeping the horses happy as they learn how to respect each other and they also get the feeling of team support. At the end of training, after listening to a horse's hoofbeats all day, Jimmy Tactor listens to something else that he says is extremely important in monitoring the health of your horse. The horse's heartbeats. An elevated heart rate can mean that a horse is suffering from stress or perhaps even illness and perhaps a change in training regimen is in order. We moderate the heart rates, how they recover from the workout. I choose to take 12 minutes after uh, the horse have done the workout to check where the heart rate is. And uh, if a horse is very tired, it's above 100. I like them to be, you know, like in uh, between uh, 75 and 85 and if they're in that range they've done a good workout it's not too hard but it's just right workout for them one of the big advantages of having a private training facility is that jimmy has strict control over the conditions of his tracks now here at millennium farms there are several tracks for training tomorrow's competitors there's a round track a straight track and a sand track after every set of horses is trained, the track is watered and groomed to remove any holes. This way, there's less of a chance that a horse might get hurt while they're training down. By the end of April, after months of training and with the height of the racing season getting close, Passionate Glide is well on her way to qualifying for the races. The world of harness racing is filled with fun and excitement, but many wonder what happens after a standard racing career is over. Are they just put out the stud to create more standard horses, or do they just go and play in the field for the rest of their lives? Here at the Horse Park of New Jersey, we're taking a look at some of the cool careers that a standard can do after his racing career. I 
having a bad day, I come home and I tack her up and we go for a joyride through the woods. And she jumps anything I put in front of her. And this is my joyride. My name's Helen Gregory, I'm 37, and this is my horse, Tormade. My husband and I bought him at the uh, Standard Bread sale. We bought him as a racehorse, we trained him down, tried to race him, but he was just too slow. We compete in open shows with r real riding horses, and he's doing very well there also, but we enjoy to go to the Standard Bread shows because we have a lot of fun. This is a gelding named Effect Unknown, and Effect Unknown had a, a very good race career. He made about 175,000, and he, he has a race record of 157, and he had numerous drivers, a lot of amateurs drove him. He was always very cooperative that way, and he's just a sweetheart. He's good on and off the track, he's good turned out with other horses, and he's just a pet. Somali, and I've had him seven years. So I, I adopted him from the Standard Red Retirement Foundation when he finished his racing career, where he had 128 starts and made about $300,000 racing all over the East Coast. And we really enjoy him for his willingness to work. And whatever we want him to do, he does. We, he walk truck canters, he, he drives. I've won in national champion many years in a row with him in, in versatility, meaning I ride and drive him. And he also goes on hunter paces, fox hunts, and teaches small children how to ride. This being one of them, this is my daughter Vivian. Horse. His name is Whittingham. He made almost $600,000 on the racetrack. He's 11 years old. Uh, they just retired him this spring. And I started riding him for the Standard Red Retirement Foundation just in the last two weeks and brought him here. And he's been wonderful. And he's just an amazing horse. He's just classy all the way. So I've fallen in love with him. And, and I wish I could adopt him, actually. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I'm a thoroughbred person and I've fallen in love with this horse. <laughs> I really enjoy my standard breads and all the wonderful things I can do with them. Anyone can adopt a standard bread and have a friend for life. My name is Sonia Scoville and um, I found Petey on an advertisement board at a feed store when I was picking up feed for my dogs at the time because I did not have horses and I liked the look of him. I saw that he was a standard bred, and my vet has standard bred, so I had seen how kind and gentle and willing that the breed is. Um, I went to go see him. He was in a, a backyard set up at a family's house where there were ATVs going behind him and kids walking underneath him and sheep and goats and all kinds of stimulus, and he just stood there quiet. And that was the most important part, was his demeanor, his disposition. Uh, during PD's main show year, which was 2005, he took anywhere from 60 to 100 ribbons that year, and 80 to 85 percent of those ribbons were first place ribbons, and he also achieved at the same time year end and day end high point championships. I truly love the standard bred breed. They're a very willing and kind animal. They are so smart, and they are willing to try to do anything you ask of them and do it well and uh, I'll never give up Petey, and I'll never give up my standard bread.
Adopting a standard bread after racing can lead to participation in horse shows in a short time. In fact, it may surprise you how quickly a standard bread can be ready to show and win ribbons. I started to ride Gary uh, last year and I only rode her for three weeks before we went to the first show and we won two out of four classes we were in and she did absolutely awesome. She's really, really easy to please and easy to teach and whatever we do, she just loves it. And we go on the trails and she's perfect. We go to horse shows and she's perfect. She's, uh, she's just one, one of a kind. Uh, what can I say about standard breads? They are very lovable and pretty. Yes, lovable, pretty, they're safe. Um, and you can trust on them. And we have quite a collection, so they're very addictive. Standard breads are capable of doing many different things, such as driving, riding, western pleasure, jumping, trail riding, endurance, and easily work with children. So basically, you can teach a standard bread to do any equine sport. its passionate glide reaching the finish line in her first qualifying race as a three-year-old in 2006 in 158 flat. The champion filly passionate glide is back in business. It won't be too long before I'll be coming to the Meadowlands as a driver. Because guess what? That's my dream. Come on, buddy. And Matthew Thor's Waples makes it over the finish line in record time. Being a groom is hard work. The day often starts before dawn and they may have to work seven days a week. Horses wear different kinds of shoes depending on their needs, their gait, and their conformation. They may also wear one kind of shoes on their front feet and another kind behind. The type of shoe can make an enormous difference in their performance. Horses love to eat grass. They also love to eat hay cubes and sweet feet, which is what Passionate Glide loves best. Many racetracks race year round for purses from a few thousand to millions of dollars. Many racetracks have been in operation for nearly a century, but some are just being built. What does the future of harness racing look like? Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Tioga Downs, Peter Kleinhand, take it away. Field up to filing for the quarter. Electric Star is right in there, second and completed pass on the far outside. Here comes Seagrove from third. And down the stretch they come. So real. Looking to go all the way. Leads by three. Seagrove is second. So real. Gets it done. Tioga Downs is a brand new facility in Nichols, New York, and will offer gambling, racing, food, entertainment, and lots of year-round family fun. The facility will host 750 gaming machines and cost nearly $25 million to construct, and they're expecting more than 850,000 visitors in their first year, 2006. Tioga features a 5 eighths of a mile track, a 90,000 square foot grandstand, 
and 19,000 square foot casino floor. Visitors can enjoy live racing during 50 days over the summer, while the casino will remain open all year. Hopefully Tioga will be the forerunner of, of, the, of the, the new generation of harness tracks, or race tracks for that matter, which are able to attract uh, younger people, families, and uh, as well as integrate the VLTs or slot machines with the racing. So I'm hoping that uh, this is going to be the, the forerunner of the modern harness track or racetrack, uh, smaller, seasonal, and family friendly. We have especially designed the paddock to be open so that people coming to the races can get closer to the horses before the race actually begins. We want to show the public what happens before a horse goes out on the track. This is designed to open up our gates so that the experience of being closer to the horses will mean something special for the betting public. I'm hoping that I've found a formula that will work. When people come to Tioga, we want them to come back. They have to say this is a lot of fun and I love the way this place feels. We hope Jeff and his partners get a great turnout at Tioga Downs this summer and we hope that racing fans throughout North America will make the trip to Tioga to enjoy a great day of racing action this summer. At the making of this film, Passionate Glide's performance on the racetrack was yet to be seen, but updates will be available on Jimmy Tactor's website. And Make sure you tune into the Hamiltonian on CBS to see if Passionate Glide competes in the prestigious Hamiltonian Oaks. We've seen the work and dedication that goes into training a horse. We've seen the versatility and adaptability of the standard bread, and we've also seen a glimpse into the future of harness racing. For Inside the Heart of Harness Racing, I'm Sam McKee. I'm Matthew Thorsleipels. Thank you for watching.